Throughout history, humans have observed the night sky and recorded the glimmering, pulsating lights above our heads. The first star and planet maps were drawn on cave walls, recorded as calendars, and tracked using astronomical symbols. Then books and written documents became the primary source of information expressing how people of that era viewed the universe. As the sophistication of technology and our comprehension of the universe increased, more and more planets in our solar system were discovered. Moons orbiting Jupiter and Saturn, icy giant planets, and icy dwarf planets. But there were also numerous undiscovered realms, like the fictitious planet Vulcan for instance. In the early 1800s, it was believed that Vulcan was the closest planet to the Sun, even closer than Mercury. Even more credible astronomers were alleged to have witnessed it. It turned out, however, that it did not exist and that what many of them were observing were likely sunspots. In the mid-1980s, a dark planet named Nemesis was proposed to explain why the Earth experiences periodic catastrophic extinctions. Could a massive object at the limit of the solar system actually be directing comets toward Earth? Well, an object of that nature has never been discovered. Even in recent years, there has been a worldwide search for the enigmatic planet 9 beyond Neptune. However, as of August 2023, nothing has been found. It would appear that we are perpetually searching for new planets lingering in the shadows of the solar system. And one of the most intriguing examples of this is the hypothetical planet Phaeton, which was thought to exist between Mars and Jupiter. The true fifth planet from the Sun. So why did scientists search for this enigmatic planet? Why did they believe it was present? And what were they able to find in its place? Let us find out together. Hello everyone, welcome to Z. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to receive our daily videos. The discovery of Uranus by William Herschel in 1781 rekindled interest in our solar system. After thousands of years, Uranus was the first planet to be discovered. Thus astronomers of the time began observing the night sky with the hope of becoming the next to discover a new planet. However, discovering a new planet is akin to searching for a needle in a haystack as the solar system spans a vast expanse. The tedious bode law was a mathematical method discovered at the time that appeared to predict where you might begin searching, thereby narrowing the search area. The formula suggested that extending outward, each planet should be approximately twice as far from the Sun as the one before it. And when applied to the known planets at the time, it accurately predicted the distances of each including the newly discovered Uranus. According to the formula, however, there was an absent planet between Mars and Jupiter, approximately 2.8 astronomical units from the Sun. After discovering this intriguing gap in the sequence, a large number of astronomers began searching for the predicted absent world. Then on January 1, 1801, astronomer Giuseppe Piazzi observed an unidentified of light quietly moving among the stars. Initially believing it to be a comet, he named it after the Roman deity of agriculture, Ceres. At 2.8 astronomical unit from the Sun, however Ceres appeared to almost perfectly match the tedious Bode law, and despite the fact that Ceres was fainter than the other known planets at the time, indicating that it was considerably smaller, it was considered by many to be the missing planet. Finally, the genuine fifth planet from the Sun was discovered. The enigma surrounding the lacuna in the tedious Bode law sequence has been resolved. A planetary symbol was assigned to it, and the interior solar system appeared to be in order. Was it so? The excitement surrounding the discovery of Ceres swiftly subsided. A year later in 1802, a celestial body named Pallas was discovered. Then in 1804, another named Juno was discovered. In addition, Vesta was discovered in 1807. Each of these newly discovered objects shares roughly the same orbit as Ceres, leading astronomers to suspect that they represent a new class of objects. Despite this, according to astronomy texts, our solar system had 11 planets for roughly half a century. 
Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are followed by Vesta, Juno, Ceres, and Pallas, then Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. Soon after in 1846, the planet Neptune was also discovered, but it did not conform to the Titius Bode law because it was eight astronomical units closer than predicted. As the formula did not work for the outer planets, it was determined that the Titius Bode law was most likely just a cosmic coincidence. By the 1860s, most astronomers acknowledged that there was a fundamental difference between the main planets and objects such as Ceres and Pallas, consequently they were renamed asteroids and the region where they are located was dubbed the Asteroid Belt. Within a year of the discovery of the missing planet, it became apparent that no such planet existed. In the asteroid belt, there are no main planets, only millions of scattered rocks. But where did these granite fragments originate? In 1823, Heinrich Wilhelm Olbers, the astronomer who discovered the asteroid palace, proposed that these objects were truly fragments of a destroyed planet, thereby introducing the planet Phaeton hypothesis. The name Phaeton derives from a mythical Greek character and signifies shining one according to the myth. Phaeton was the son of Helios, the sun deity, who traversed the sky daily on his burning chariot. One day, Helios granted Phaeton's request to drive the chariot, but the voyage was a disaster because Phaeton was unable to maintain a firm grip on the horses. As a consequence, the chariot came too close to the earth, causing it to burn, and too far away, causing it to freeze. Zeus struck Phaeton with one of his lightning bolts, destroying him instantaneously after receiving numerous complaints from both the sky stars and the planet itself. A fitting moniker for a planet that has been destroyed. According to the Phaeton planet hypothesis, the asteroid belt was formed following the annihilation of a planet that orbited the Sun between Mars and Jupiter. It became known as the disruption theory and proposed that one of the following processes devastated the planet. The first possibility is that it approached Jupiter too closely and was torn apart by its tremendous gravitational tides. The second possibility is that it was impacted by a planet or other large celestial body. The third possibility is that it was devastated by Nemesis, a hypothetical brown dwarf companion star to the Sun. The fourth possibility is that it was fractured by an internal cataclysmic process. So was there actually a planet that was somehow torn apart, leaving only fragments orbiting the Sun? However intriguing this notion is, it is unlikely that it occurred. Studies of the asteroid belt have revealed that its total mass is only 4% of the moon's mass. In other words, it lacks sufficient material to have once formed a planet. The asteroids are now believed to be leftovers from the origin of our solar system approximately 4.5 billion years ago. The accretion disk consists of the remnants of a disk of gas and particles that once surrounded the Sun and is responsible for the formation of all planets, moons, asteroids, and comets. The asteroid belt may appear to be nothing more than a circle of rocks circling the Sun, but it is actually a window into the past, allowing us to study a fixed period in the history of our solar system. A glimpse into a time when matter combined to create the embryos of a planet that would never exist. What if, however it had formed, what would have been the planet Phaeton like? The hypothetical planet would have orbited the Sun between Mars and Jupiter and been smaller than Pluto, making it the smallest main planet in the solar system. It would have been a planet with little atmosphere and no magnetic field to shield its stony surface from the Sun's rays. However, as anticipated, the solar system is filled with numerous smaller planets. It may have had an ocean of liquid water beneath its crust that was heated enough for life to exist. We presumably would have dispatched multiple spacecraft to explore the planet's surface and possibly land on it. Although many 19th and 20th century astronomers wished for the existence of this hypothetical planet, asteroid belt research has disproved Phaeton. But despite not existing, it had a compelling backstory one that influenced both science fiction authors and scientists. This is the planet that was discovered, obliterated, and subsequently forgotten. 
I hope you enjoyed this intriguing glimpse at the uncharted world of Phaeton. If you did, then please click the like button and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.